I think the first time we did meet you is when you know you were part of the, you, yes I interviewed you with the rest of the guys and as, and as yet um, one of the things about our show is that the fans always like to hear the backstory um, and with the four of you there we couldn't really get much of it um, so international audience great to always start off with where you were born and raised uh, and then we just go through to where you are now okay so yeah I'm, I'm Kenny Terry and I was born and raised in um, Philly. Well, actually, I was born in New Jersey. Okay. And I uh, I was raised in Philadelphia. So okay. by the age of five, I was already living in Philadelphia. Okay. And so I've been in Philadelphia all the way up to the time um, that um, we got the deal. So, so growing up in, in Philly, though, what, what was that like? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it was, a, it was a life of sorts because, I mean, you know, it's a lot of people. We grew up, or I grew up in North Philly. And in North Philly, you know, you have the, the, the row homes. So, like, all the homes are all together like that, like about a good 14, 15, 20 houses in a row. Wow. And then no more than two, you know, two-story houses. But they're, they're really tiny, but you don't know that when you're small. <laughs> yeah. You just think, oh, you know, everybody got the same house. But if I go back to that house now, it would just look like it would just look like a doll baby house. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. We grew up in the in the in the in the pretty rough part of the, of, of the city. Wow. In Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of us would say about Philadelphia and Will Smith, Fresh Prince talks about Philly. Um mm -hmm. the city the city of love, a brotherly love. But did you feel that that was the city of brotherly love and this was a, a great city growing up? Well, believe it or not, yeah. Only because, you know, for the most part, I stayed in, in house. Like I wasn't one of those uh, kids that was always hanging out and um, playing with all the kids all the time. But when I did go out, when I finally started um, opening up and going out as like a teenager yeah. and doing stuff like that, I mean, it's not hard to, to make friends with people. It's, it's just up to you how you want to deal with people, mm. you know? So, but honestly, I've only really had like one good solid friend like that came from elementary school up to junior high school. And then we kind of, you know, broke off from there. But uh, other than that, like when it comes to like the, the singing and the music and the groups and stuff like that, yeah. It was a brotherhood in a lot of ways because, you know, everybody outside of being in a gang or something like that, the the group was the gang. You know, that, that was our, our support system to each other. Yeah. You know, so if you grew up um with somebody that's growing along with you, yeah, that's where the brotherly love comes from. Okay. Basically. Mm -hmm. I think is Gamble and Hoff, are they from Philly? Because the... um well, I believe they are. I, I, I don't know exactly where they're from, but I know they, for all my life, they were in Philly creating okay. music and stuff. So I was more so getting to the fact that it seemed that Philly had its own center for music. When you were growing up, what were you sort of listening to and being inspired by? Oh, yeah. Speaking of Gambling Hub, I used to listen to, uh, of course, uh, Teddy, Teddy, Teddy Pendergrass. Okay. I listened to uh, Phyllis Hyman. Okay. I listened to... All, I listened to everything, everything that they, it was possibly on the radio, I basically listened to. But not only that, I listened to all the music that my mom used to listen to, from like the, all the oldies but goodies that they would call back then. Yeah. You know, but now it's funny because right now it's like all of that stuff that I listen to is oldies but goodies now, so I feel <laughs> old. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. But uh, yeah. But I I'm not old, I'm just older. Yeah, but I think that though, that type of music, um, we didn't realize what we what we had until now, where there's not a, the, as much creativity in music. Um, no one's playing live instruments; everyone's just sampling and, and stuff. But yeah. when you were growing up, um, you know, in, in North Philly, what was the vision as to wh where you're going to be when you grow up? Uh, well, growing up, I didn't really think about it much, you know, because I mean, I was just living in North Philly, but. You know, when you're just going to school every day, the dreams ain't quite there yet. Okay. You know, because you're still developing and getting the, your mindset of your own. But as I, once I got out of high school, all I was thinking about is, okay, how fast can I jump to be grown? And then okay. once I'm grown, I'm going to do everything I need to do. Because my mom, you know, she always 
pressured me to, okay, well, when I was a certain age, I was already out on my own and I was doing what this, I was doing this and I was doing that. And so you're not going to be in my house past a certain age. Wow. So, you know, that set a standard for me. So I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> you know, like, I don't need to be here anymore. Wow. I have a mind of my own. So at that point, by then, I had already caught the, the talent bug as far as singing. And 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 because and, for me, it all came from my mother. You wow. know, like she really was the inspiration in everything that I'm doing now. Wow. Because I saw the joy in her in her whole demeanor every time she would get into her mode of sitting back and listening to music. And yeah. I saw how happy music made her. Yeah. So that made me happy. I didn't know what to do with the happiness, so I just started <laughs> singing, you know? And so that's how I got to learn so much music is through her listening to music all the time. So, but then what about the actual training to be a singer? I mean, that, that, you know, it's one thing, I love music, but I can't sing a lick. How, how did that, the talent come? Um, well, my mom actually could sing. So okay. her being talented, I, I, I guess me being young and being so impressionable, I just, I caught it. Like, so I was, I was sitting, I would watch her and I'd be like, okay, how does she, how is she able to sound like, the people that she's singing, like, okay, Sam Cooke, for instance. Yeah. Everything that she that he sing, she would sing it from beginning to end exactly like him because it was easy because she's a female singing a male's song. Yeah, yeah. So she, she had a, a lower voice for a woman, but it was strong enough. You can hear it over top of the music, you know? Mm -hmm. So she would have that talent of always being able to lock down. She wasn't, she had a, uh, a good ear, so she wasn't tone deaf. She she knew exactly what uh, the person's uh, vibe in the song was supposed to be, and so she yeah. would just sing it effortlessly. But she not only sang that way; she also was a comedian. So she would, she would always be able to impersonate different personalities, like in the neighborhood stuff like that. Uh -oh. So that was always funny and entertaining to me. So I would take that, and I'm like, oh, you know. I'm going to keep trying to learn what that is because she always knew how to make you feel at home, wow. but at the same time, entertain you. So she never, she, she never, it was never a boring moment in the house. Yeah. You know what I mean? So from the, from the singing point of it, I just wanted so bad to be able to get into the music the way she did, mm. you know, and it got me a, a pretty long way. But as far as vocal training, yeah. So she, I would consider her my vocal trainer, but she didn't train me. She didn't even know I was singing for a long mm -hmm. time until I got into uh, the junior high. She knew I wanted to sing. I was on on the choir in school, yeah. But when I got to high school, that's when I really uh, got more serious about it. But that my first vocal training was literally singing in uh, high school in, in the gospel choir. Okay. So. But at that, and that's when I learned what my vocal range was, you know, like, so the teacher had me originally singing tenor. So, you know, in, in a gospel choir, you have sopranos, the altos, and the tenors. Yeah. And you got the sopranos, <laughs> and then you got the altos, <laughs> and then you got the tenors, <laughs> so they, you know, uh, everybody's yelling. <laughs> so I'm, 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 in, I'm in there and the teacher that was teaching us at the time, she knew exactly what I was, where I was coming from. She knew how much um, of an ear that I had for music and how close attention I paid to different uh, characters and different uh, voices. So she knew how to bring my style out of me. Hmm. But I had to convince her, I'm not actually a tenor. Because like every, every time I would leave the, um, the choir, that day and go home, my throat would feel like, why am I feel so worked up? Okay. It's worked up because I'm singing and yelling and competing with all the other guys that's yelling as opposed to hearing myself. Yeah. So I told her, because there was also basses on the choir. So I said to her, I said, um, I think I need to sing bass instead of, sing. see, I was good at singing tenor. I just didn't like what it felt like. Okay. So, so I said, um, I think you need to try me in the basses. I think the basses need help because you, 
you know, the bases are so low and they're like, hallelujah, you know, but you can't really hear them when you got, oh, you know, stuff going on. <laughs> so, you know, I basically had to go to my comfort in my voice because that's actually what I was. I was a bass baritone. I literally sounded like Lou Rawls at 17. Wow. Yeah. So I knew at a certain point I'm going to have to, um, you know, make the choice that's right for me. So once yeah. I did that, see, the teacher kind of played more to that for me. Okay. But when I still went to go to St. Leeds, she still would put me anywhere. It wouldn't matter. Uh, okay. So, so that training is initially what got me my range much wider. Wow. Which really helped me out a lot once we finally got the deal and did all of that because when certain uh, people would fall off, I was there to pick it up. Yeah. And stand, and stand in. So. So going back, I think one of the things that's been fascinating because, you know, we've got an international community of music fans so from around the world and, and, and most of the time we hear stories, it's about, oh, singing in church and then it came out. But very few of you do sing in school as opposed to church. Um, but within the school setting, was there, and I, and I, I do, we wonder, those of us who are you know, not American, that we always assume you guys, as tall as you are, you're probably playing basketball or, or, or baseball and singing mm -hmm. wasn't really something that you'd get into. But how did you make that decision to focus on the singing and, and put the other things aside? Because, I don't know, singing, singing was my outlet. Okay, aside of singing, the way my roster went, um, the last two periods of my, of my day was... ROTC, you know, Reserved Officers Training Corps. Okay. And then the choir. So somehow I I didn't have to do as much physical activity. I mean, I still had gym, but I didn't have it every day. Okay. So I was able to, to pick and choose which ones I wanted more. So mm -hmm. I went for the, the ROTC because of the discipline. I wanted to have my own discipline and what I was doing. It didn't, it didn't take me to the service because I figured, you know, I don't know if I want to choose that decision because I don't want to just be a singer in the service. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I, so I was thinking about all that stuff because I've seen the bands, the Air Force bands and all that stuff. And I'm okay. like, uh, that's not big enough. Yeah. But um, I made a decision when I was in, um, when I had the choir because it was my outlet. Like that was what made me the happiest. And then, then to, to, you know, when you first start the day off of school, it's like, okay, I'm here with these jokers. You know, already know who the class clowns are. You know how, who you had to listen to, and then you know where you need to be in order to focus on what's on the board. Yeah. So I was always closer to the front of the class than in the back of the class. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my mother raised me well. She, she, she was pretty disciplinary with me. So mm -hmm. I knew not to act up so much before, I, you know, I would get in trouble. Yeah. So, but to go through the whole day and know that I was going to have music at the end of the day, yeah, I was so happy. <laughs> I, I figured, you know, something's going to come out of it because, like I said, the training all came from being disciplined to stay on your note mm -hmm. and know what you're singing in the choir. But at the same time, we wasn't just singing; we were rehearsing for shows that we would yeah. do for the school. And it, even without that, I guess I always had the knack of wanting to be on stage because. Even in ROTC, I used to be the guy um, that sings the national anthem at, uh, at every okay. assembly. Okay. So I got known for that, you know. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching.